Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So the Xbox Series has now been out for an entire year, so I thought it'd be a good time to take a look back at some of the best games available on the Xbox Series X and S. Now with that in mind, this video is actually going to be focusing on games that have released this generation for the Xbox Series, rather than games that are playable through backwards compatibility that released last generation for the Xbox One. So this list does comprise of games that have all released since the launch of the Xbox series. With that said though, the Xbox series does have a pretty good library of games for just its first year, so today we will take a look at the 15 best games available on the Xbox series. However, do keep in mind that all of this is only my opinion, and if I do miss one of your favorite games, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Other than that though, let's just go and jump right into it. And to start this list off, I have Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is a game that kind of goes a little bit under the radar, which I just find had to be such a shame because this really is just a good game all around. I know it does have a unique art style, which not everybody is going to like, but when you actually play this game, especially on the Xbox Series X, this game looks absolutely fantastic. It really pops off screen with its vibrant colors and its vast open world. And that's one of the things that really stands out to me when it comes to this game, because it is actually fun to explore. It does take some inspiration from games like Zelda Breath of the Wild and how you can glide, climb, and it also has a plethora of dungeons across the world with plenty of puzzles to solve. But it on top of that, it also has fun hack and slash combat, and the story itself is quite amusing. Not a lot of games can pull it off, but the narration in this game is actually quite humorous, and yeah, I just think that this game is good from top to bottom, so definitely don't ignore Immortals Phoenix Rising. And here I have yet another Ubisoft game being Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, Assassin's Creed has always been known for its historical settings in vast open worlds, but with Valhalla, it almost seems like they just took everything to the next level. This game is absolutely massive, and this time you are playing the role of a Viking. And with that, not only does it have a beautiful world to explore, but the combat is a little bit more brutal than past entries. Everything just has a bit of a crunch to it, and it does make the combat feel a little bit more robust rewarding in this game. For that matter, Valhalla does continue on with the more RPG aspects of the Assassin's Creed franchise that we have been seeing in more recent entries, but with Valhalla, they do expand and optimize on that just a little bit further. This is a legitimate RPG, and if you do like some of the more recent entries, you probably really like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As of recent, Disney has been going big into games with their Marvel-related heroes, but one of the more interesting releases would be Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. And surprisingly, Guardians of the Galaxy is actually one of the better single-player experiences that you can play right now. Unlike prior games on this list though, this is actually more of a linear style action adventure game that really focuses on its story. Though for me, I don't personally think that open world automatically means better, and I think Guardians of the Galaxy really shows that. It may be linear, but it's also impactful. You can really see this from both a game design as well as its writing. The writing itself is well done with plenty of humorous dialogue, especially the banter going back and forth between all of the characters, but you also do have plenty of player choice throughout the game as well in different types of conversations. This adds an extra little layer to its already well-told story, but they just really kind of drag you into the universe with its creative and colorful worlds. It also has highly entertaining combat. Now, you only directly control Star-Lord, but you do have plenty of different abilities that you can play around with, and you can command your team to do different things as well. It's not overly complex, but it's always a lot of fun. And here I have Death's Door, which is a smaller independent game that might go a little bit overlooked, but it absolutely should not be. This is an excellent game that wears its heart on its sleeves. You can easily see its inspiration being top-down Zelda games, but not only does it emulate that experience, but it does so masterfully. It has a well-designed, interconnected world with a lot of atmosphere. It's got a plethora of puzzles to keep your mind busy. And then there's the combat, which is where it really separates itself. It's not necessarily overly complex, nor does it need to be. You basically have your melee attack, a ranged attack, and then also a roll. Combining all three feels nice and fluid, and it also strikes a nice balance in terms of its long range and short range attacks. In order to replenish your ammo in this game, you actually have to use your melee attack, which keeps the intensity on high. It's just a smartly designed game, whether it be with its gameplay, its world design, its puzzles, or even its bosses. I'd say the only thing that I wish that they would have maybe done a little bit different is to have given you a map in this game, but beyond that, this is an excellent game that I would highly 
recommend. In a world where we haven't gotten a new Metal Gear Solid or Splinter Cell game in years, Hitman without a doubt has become the best stealth-based series in recent years, and Hitman 3 is probably IO's best work yet. If you've played Hitman 1 or 2, you probably know what you're getting yourself into, but you're basically put into a playground where you have to assassinate your target as you see fit. They allow for your creativity to take over, and thanks to the amazing level design in this game, there's no set one way to accomplish your goal. You can either take a straightforward approach or be as creative as possible and slowly but methodically form a strategy and become a true Hitman. The choice is completely yours, and not only is this a lot of fun, but it also adds a ton of replayability. If you're looking for a game that's really going to show off the power of the Xbox Series X, then you need to get your hands on Flight Simulator. This game looks absolutely stunning and debatably is the best looking game out right now visually. It really does look photorealistic at times, but it's also a really good simulation experience. I mean, I can gush about the graphics when it comes to this game all day, but because this game feels so realistic, it is just an, an incredible experience, and you almost forget at times that this is a game. They do just such an incredible job with not only the world, but in how each airplane in this game controls, and you do have various different airplanes, which will all, of course, handle differently, and then they're just constantly adding more and more locations in this game as time goes on. This game, because it is so good, it looks so good, and it feels so good, this game will last years and years as they just continue to add more and more content in. If anything else, this is just one of the most incredible experiences in video games right now. In my opinion, from a mechanical standpoint, the Gears of War franchise is the all-time greatest third-person shooter. There's just nothing that feels quite like the Gears of War franchise. But the way this game works and how you have to position yourself and take cover, the Gears franchise would translate well into an RTS, and after toying around with the idea for years and years, they finally made it happen with Gears Tactics. And just as fans expected, this is a brilliant translation. Everything that you know and love from the Gears franchise has made it over to Gears Tactics, whether that be its cover mechanics, its creative weapons to revive a fallen ally, or even its executions, it's all here in Gears Tactics. And that is something about this game. Gears is known for its aggressive nature, and RTS games do have a tendency of being a little bit slower paced, but with Gears Tactics, thanks to its execution system, like giving you extra turns, it keeps things a little faster paced with you being aggressive. Whether you like the Gears of War franchise or not though, Gears Tactics is a great RTS experience. For years, Xbox fans have been asking for more JRPGs, and really, I think with the Xbox series, it has gotten off to a fantastic start, and you can really see that with Tales of Arise. This is a long-running action JRPG franchise, but with Tales of Arise, they really stepped up their game here. They completely overhauled the visuals with Unreal Engine, and this game looks absolutely gorgeous with its art style. This is one of the better AAA JRPGs on the market right now. It has fun combat where you can play as a team and do these insane looking combos and it also has an interesting story in typical fashion when it comes to jrpgs you do play as an amnesiac character though the overall premise with you playing as a slave that can feel no pain is really interesting especially with the ongoing dynamic across all of the characters it's still almost kind of hard to believe, but after being exclusive to the PlayStation brand for years, Yakuza has finally made its way over to Xbox, and they took no time at all to bring the newest Yakuza entries over to the Xbox series. This includes both Yakuza Like a Dragon and then Judgment and Lost Judgment. Now, these games do play quite a bit different from one another, whereas Yakuza Like a Dragon plays more like a traditional turn-based style of JRPG, which was a bit of a surprise, but they did pull that off extraordinarily well. But then you also have Judgment, which takes the mantle of being more of your beat-em-up style game that the Yakuza franchise is so well known for. Both of which, though, are very fun, and just as you'd expect when it comes to the Yakuza franchise, these games have extraordinary, thrilling stories with twists and turns around every corner. Corner. Truthfully, I do believe that if you are a fan of single-player storage run games, these are among the very best entries in the entire 
industry. These games are also atmospherically located in Japan. They have fun gameplay. There's a ton to do with all of the different mini games throughout its world. And quite frankly, these are just good games top to bottom, especially if you like single player driven experiences. Now, I will say with both of these games being a part of a long running franchise, both of these are actually great entry points to the franchise as they both have a completely new cast of characters and their own individual stories. Now, typically, I'm not really a big fan of roguelike experiences where if you die, you have to start back from the beginning. But Hades, well, this one's a special case. This rarely ever happens to me, but with Hades, this is a game that the more I played it, the more I liked it. By the time I played it for five hours, I knew I liked it. But by the time I played it for 10, 15, 20, or even 25 hours, I just continued to like this game more and more. Yes, this is a roguelike game, so technically you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. You die, you start back from the beginning, and you do it all over again. But with Hades, each playthrough feels different. And that's because you kind of choose your upgrade path with each randomly generated room. You kind of build out your character, and it does involve some luck, but with enough skill, you can make your way to the very top to escape the underworld and your father Hades. What I will say about this game is that its combat is exceptional, but really, even when you die, you almost feel kind of rewarded because you're able to talk to the characters within this universe just a little bit more. Their stories are genuinely interesting, and the more you play this game, the more you're going to uncover about all of these characters. It's just so well written. It's got great voice acting. Some of the music in this game is exceptional, especially some of the hidden stuff that you find I really liked. And then, like I said before, the gameplay is just outstanding. In recent years, Capcom has been knocking it out of the park when it comes to the Resident Evil franchise. And after just its first year, the Xbox series has already gotten its first Resident Evil experience being Resident Evil Village. And wow, is this a good one. Now, unlike some of the older entries in the franchise, Resident Evil Village is not a third-person shooter, but rather, it's instead a first-person shooter, much like Resident Evil 7. After all, this is a direct sequel to Resident Evil 7. Being set in first-person view does fit the Resident Evil franchise very well, though, and some people even view it as a more overall immersive experience, especially considering this is a horror-based franchise. I personally like both perspectives, but outside of that, I do think that Resident Evil Village feels very similar to the classic Resident Evil experience. You do play in an interconnected world, almost kind of like a Metroidvania. You're going to solve various puzzles and, of course, run away from the many, many terrors across the world. And when it comes to Village, they did introduce quite a few new enemies, including vampires as well as werewolves. This changes the way you approach each situation, and it just adds a whole new layer of terror. Being a Resident Evil game, though, of course, it does have several memorable villains as well as a gripping story. And especially when it comes to this one, it is quite over the top, to say the least. Now, if there's any game that took me by surprise in the first year of the Xbox series, it would be It Takes Two. Now, this is a mandatory cooperative game, but do not let that stop you. This game does come with a free friend pass that allows you to have your friend join you completely free of charge. So this is never really a major problem. Now, I could easily say that It Takes Two is a 3D platformer, but I almost feel like that would be a bit of a disservice to this game because it's really just so much more than that. This is by far one of the most creative games that I have ever played, bar none. It's just constantly changing, and one level you might think to yourself, wow, that was just insanely creative, and you wonder how they can top that, and then in the next level, they just blow you away all over again. It's just one thing after the other, and interestingly enough, this is an asynchronous cooperative game on top of that, which means that you and your cooperative partner will be doing slightly different things. You always have to work together because, of course, it does take two, but because you are doing slightly different things to help each other out, you can actually play the complete game over again from the other perspective, which gives you a whole new experience. So this game does have a little bit of replayability as well. It really is an absolute masterpiece that surprises you at every single turn and even with its story it does have an interesting story that's both humorous and deep at the same time playground games for a while now has been known for making some of the best racing games of all time in the forza horizon series and forza horizon 5 shows exactly why 
Forza Horizon 5 is a stunning spectacle mixing in great music, set pieces, and a beautiful landscape in Mexico. Playground Games once again knows how to mix in car culture with just such a fun overall experience in an open world with tons of things to do and you're just constantly rewarded. There's always something new and interesting to do in this game. They do have various race types, whether that be off-road racing or street racing. You can go around and play some creative arcade-like games. You can go drifting. You can explore its vast open world and discover a ton of hidden secrets. Forza Horizon 5 just has so much to do and not only is this game absolutely stunning to look at, but it's also quite frankly one of the most fun racing games that I have ever played. Truthfully, I don't think that I can put into words just how good this game is. I just don't think that I can do it justice. But what I can tell you is that Forza Horizon 5 is not simply just a racing game. It's a masterpiece on wills. Now, for these next two games, I had a really tough time trying to figure out which order to place them in. So really, you can swap both these games in and out because they really are that amazing. But here I do have Psychonauts 2. Now, I actually helped crowdfund this project years ago because I thought the first game was really among the best 3D platformers of all time. But now with Psychonauts 2, it took that original formula and it surpassed it in every possible way. It's got everything that you know and love from the first game. It's got those charming but quirky characters. It's got tight platforming, several abilities that you can use in combat, and several collectibles hidden throughout its world. And all of these things feel so good, and when you combine all these with its excellent storytelling, you get a true and absolute masterpiece. You don't usually see good stories like this when it comes to 3D platformers, but Psychonauts 2 is a rare breed. Its story does touch up on some mental illnesses, and even though it can be humorous at times, it can also be incredibly deep at the same time. It really is a special game, whether that be with its gameplay, its story, or even with its art style and world. That is something that really took me by surprise in this game, but this game is actually quite beautiful and atmospheric. It does look unique, and it really just kind of adds to the overall charm of Psychonauts 2. And here at the top spot, and like I said before, you can actually swap this out with Psychonauts 2 because they're both just that good. But I went ahead and decided to put the flagship Xbox title here being Halo Infinite. Now, as of this video, unfortunately, I have not gotten to play its single player just yet. But after playing its multiplayer, I am absolutely sold on Halo Infinite. The multiplayer portion of this game is probably the most fun I have had in video games in a very long time. Every once in a while, there's a game that just kind of hooks me and I just cannot put it down. And well, Halo Infinite is that game for me right now. Ever since the multiplayer has released, I have been playing this game nonstop because it feels and plays so good. 343 Industries has taken a lot of criticism since taking over the Halo franchise from Bungie, and rightfully so. But now after playing Halo Infinite, I can say that Halo is back. It seems like they finally found the right formula for Halo and they made it work. Halo Infinite seems like a nice combination of your old school classic Halo experience with more of your new school Halo. There's really parts of both here and it works extremely well. The mechanics, movement, and guns feel fantastic in this game. There are some new abilities that you can play around with in this game that adds an extra little layer to the game. And then there's the sound quality. This is something that I haven't seen many people talk about, but the sound in Halo Infinite is extraordinary. The way the guns sound in this game, I think is really among the best that I have heard in any shooter ever, period. Now, like I said before, I haven't gotten to play the single player component just yet, but the multiplayer game truthfully has sold me on this game and I am just loving Halo Infinite. Anyways, though, that's it for this list. But if I missed any of your favorite games, make sure to let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you like the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.